in today's lecture we will study about plane sailing now what is plane sailing plane sailing is based on the principle which ignores the curvature or rather the shape of the earth and assumes that the earth is flat so you as you know that the earth is a spheroid and the sailings across the surface of the earth are actually as arcs and not straight lines right however plane sailing is based on the concept that the earth is not sphere but a flat surface and it works very well because uh, it works only for small distances distances let's say up to 600 nautical miles because uh, and again i'm drawing these meridians and parallels of latitude across to show you that uh, if we focus on a small portion of the earth just a small portion of the earth then we can assume the earth to be flat and the lines that we draw across this small portion can be drawn as straight lines and not as arcs that is the principle on which the plane sailing is based so plane sailing assumes that the earth is flat and hence the equator and the parallels of latitude from the equator north and south they are all parallel straight lines so let's say this is 0 degrees, this is 10 degrees north, 20 degrees north, 10 degrees south, 20 degrees south. So all these parallels of latitude are equidistant. They are equidistant from each other. So the distance between 0 to 10 is the same as 10 to 20. And similarly, the distance between 0 to 10 south is same as 10 to 20 south or 20 to 30 south. So the latitudes are equidistant from one another which you will later learn in market selling it is not like that but plane selling assumes so however plane selling still assumes that the meridians are curved lines and meridians kind of uh, segment the earth as the segments of an orange so this is how the meridians they are still curved just the way you see them on the globe and hence the east west distance between the meridians is not consistent it's different so the distance here is smaller than the distance here and maybe this distance is smaller than the distance here so you can see the change in the horizontal distance between the two meridians now why is this important this is important when we come to the formula for the plane selling so let's say you have to travel from a point a to point b now you can use plane sailing if it, this distance between point A to B is up to 600 nautical miles or less. So let's say you have to go from point A to point B. What you do? You can draw a north-south line because all our courses are measured from the north-south line. So you draw a north-south line. That's a vertical line. Join this, making it into a triangle. This angle here becomes the course this distance from a to b is called distance or distance traveled because the latitudes are assumed to be equidistant and parallel this vertical distance here becomes d lat and this horizontal distance cannot be d long because we cannot assume that the d long remains the same the d long or you know the east west distance is not the same because you can see here with the converging meridians that the east west distance does not remain the same so you can't call it d long so we call it departure departure as you have studied is the east west distance so this is what forms the basis of the formulas that we use in plane sailing all right so this course angle can also be called theta so the three formulas that come out of this is based on the principles of trigonometry so here you can say cos or cosine of course cosine of course is equal to 
d lad by distance base upon hypotenuse right so if we assume theta to be the course theta is the angle then base upon hypotenuse is d lat is the base and hypotenuse is distance the longest side is the hypotenuse similarly if you say tan course or tan theta which is opposite over base then we have tan course equals departure upon d lat and finally we modify the formula that we used for parallel sailing where departure equals d long times cos of latitude now in parallel sailing you have only one latitude but you here you have two latitudes latitudes of a and latitude of b so here we modify it and we make the formula d long times cos of m lat now m lat being the mean latitude that we have studied earlier how to calculate mean latitude is the midpoint now why are we taking the midpoint and why are we considering the midpoint is because see the latitude at we cannot consider the latitude at b so if you think about it where are we considering a, a midpoint is because let's say if you look at the two meridians right and you're traveling from a you're traveling from a to b now you can see here that the the horizontal distance increases as you go up right so which latitude should we take for us to calculate the departure we cannot take latitude a because there the departure you know might be lesser than latitude b and we can't take latitude b either because there it might be more than latitude a so we kind of take a midpoint as a compromise and we say we will calculate the departure based on a mid latitude and that is why we learn how to calculate mean latitude all right so these are the three formulas you have to remember sometimes and they are also provided in the exam so they are provided in the exam by the examiner in my case of course i provide the um, formulas to my students um, and you can have to memorize them they are provided in a formula sheet but if you are solving any questions for plane sailing these are the three formulas you use so among the list of formulas that you might get you have to remember these three formulas and when you remember these three formulas you should know how to apply them so let's take two examples two different kind of examples that we will get in plane sailing problems and solve it all right so question one is find course and distance from position a which is the departure position is 20 degrees 10 minutes north and 179 degrees 40 minutes west and we to position b which is 13 degrees 40 minutes north and 178 degrees 10 minutes east all right so the first thing we do is we look at the formula and start taking off what we have and what we don't have so do we have course no we don't do we have d lat well if i have two latitudes i can find the d lat if i have two longitudes i can find the d long if i have two latitudes i can also find the m lat all right i don't have the departure and i have the d lat here again and i don't have the distance i don't have the course so let's find the d lat first so if you have two latitudes available remember the rule of thumb different names add same name subtract named in the direction of travel so here same names you will subtract one from the other so this becomes 30 minutes and 6 degrees 30 minutes and you are going from 20 north to 13 north that means you are going in a southern southerly direction so what is 6 degrees and 30 minutes 6 degrees and 30 minutes if you multiply it by 60 this becomes 390 minutes all right so 6 times 60 is 360 plus 30 minutes is 390 minutes or simply put 6 degrees 30 minutes in your calculator and multiply it by 60 you will get the answer 390 all right similarly we have the d long so this is the d lat remember so d long opposite names you add the two so when you add the two what do you get 50 minutes here 
three five seven degrees fifty minutes you are going from west to east so you are going easterly but d long cannot be greater than 180 degrees d long cannot be greater than 180 degrees so what do we do we subtract from 360 degrees and what do we get 0, 0, 002 degrees 10 minutes and we reverse the direction of travel because that is will be the shorter way so we are going west and what is this 2 degrees 10 minutes west equal to well multiplied by 60 you get 130 minutes west is the d long all right now let me change the color of the pen now if i have two latitudes available i can also calculate the m lat so m lat in case of same names just add the two and divide by two you will get the answer and they and it will be north because both the latitudes are north so no issues with that add the two and divide by two so what do you get when you add the two divide by 20 degrees 10 minutes plus 13 degrees 40 minutes divided by 2 16 degrees 55 minutes north so this is the midpoint between the two latitudes all right so now you've got all these three so remember this is m lat so you have found m lat d lat d long so looking at the three formulas which is the equation in which you have two out of the three things this one here so the first thing you can do is find out departure so let's find out departure so departure equals d long multiplied by cos of m lat again remember d long you cannot put in degrees and minutes because there is no sine cos or tan preceding it so you have to put it in minutes only 130 minutes multiplied by cos of m lat you can put in degrees and minutes because there is a sine cos tan preceding it so you will multiply 130 multiplied by cos of 16 degrees 55 minutes which is the m lat and the answer you get is 124.4 nautical miles remember departure is a unit of distance so 124.4 nautical miles so now you have found out departure as well so you can start taking of departure so the next formula you can use is tan course because you have two out of the three things so tan course equals departure by d lat so tan course equals departure 124.4 minutes divided by d lat which is 390 minutes right so 124.4 124.4 divided by 390 so you get is 10 cores equals 0 0.31897 shift cos inverse or shift tan inverse sorry so you press shift because you have to take tan to the other side to find the value of the course so co is course so press in your calculator shift and then tan so you will get this shift tan inverse this is the sign 0 0.31897 so the course you will get is by pressing shift tan inverse put the value 0 0.31897 or depending on your calculator sometimes you can just put shift tan inverse ans and the answer you get is 17 degrees 41 minutes or 17.6 degrees or 17 degrees 41.5 minutes all answers are correct however what i tell students is that because this is a course and the course you cannot steer a course of 17 degrees 41.5 minutes so you can round it off to the next big number which is 18 degrees both answers are correct don't worry in the exam i'll give you marks for both answers so if you were my student so 18 degrees you can round it off because it's more than 30 minutes in this case so the course becomes 18 degrees round off all right so i've rounded off to a whole number because you can steer a course of 18 degrees but course cannot be 18 degrees right so we have to name this course so how can i name this course i use the d lat and d long to name the course so i will put the names of d lat south and d long west south 18 degrees west 
now what is south 18 degrees west so if this is north and this is south and this is west and this is east south is 180 degrees right and west is 270 degrees so south 18 degrees west mean mean south going from south 18 degrees to west so 180 plus 18 is 198 degrees so my true course that i have to steer from point a to point b becomes 198 degrees true all right so once you find out the course value put the d lat and d long there the name of the d lat and d long so in this case it was south and west then drawing a diagram as i have put south 18 degrees west in this case it was southwest so south 18 degrees west which means it is 198 degrees true so going from south to west your course value is increasing from 180 to 270 so if you have gone 18 degrees from south to west you have come up to 198 degrees so now here you have also found out course so you can use the value 18 degrees or you can use the value 17 degrees 41 minutes doesn't matter you get pretty much the same answer the answers will vary a little bit based on the value you have used but principally you are doing the correct thing so on the ships of course we use the whole number we use 18 degrees because you can't tell the captain i'm going to steer 17 degrees 41 minutes but uh, here i will use one of the values so i will use cos of 17 degrees 41 minutes doesn't matter is equal d light by distance all right so cos of course 17 degrees 41 minutes equals d light which is 390 by distance all right so here you have to do some transposition you have to find out distance so you will take distance to the other side and bring the cos of the course here so this becomes distance equals 390 divided by cos of 17 degrees 41 minutes so 390 divided by cos of 17 degrees 41 minutes will get you the answer 409.34 nautical miles that is the distance so that was what we have set out to find course and distance we found out the course and now we have found out the distance just for a comparison if instead of 17 degrees 41 minutes if you had chosen the course 18 degrees what distance would you get let's see the difference right so 390 divided by cos of 18 degrees and let's see how much difference it would have been so 390 divided by cos of 18 degrees would get me 410.0 nautical miles so hardly 0 0.6 of a mile which is not a very significant difference but of course as the distances become larger so let's say mercator sailing or great circle sailing every decimal point the number of decimal places you take every round off you make will of course have some difference in answers between students so don't worry about that principally if you're doing the right thing you will get marks and your working will be correct so i'll stop the video here now in my uh, next lecture i will uh, do another example of plane sailing where we will have two available positions and you will have to find or rather sorry you will have one departure position the course and distance and you will have to find the position arrived so make sure you do this question yourself understand the principles of plane sailing and uh, solve similar questions if you can till the time you understand how to solve the next question